Hello and welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you are here, and welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you're here today, friend, so please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit, and let's see what all the Lord has for us today. I want you to know that I continue to pray for you daily, that the Lord would draw you closer to Him and give you more of a desire to know Him and to know His Word, and that you will be very intentional about spending time with Him. Um, Oh, friends, we must. And in this culture that we're in, we need to share this truth that we have. We are called to be lights in the darkness. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, about being bold for him. And you may say, oh no, I can't be bold for him. What if I don't know what to say? Well, if we fill ourselves up with him and his word out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Friends, that is how we are going to be able to share him. It will just be natural the more that we spend time with him. So I want to encourage you to be very intentional about your time with him. Um, don't just gloss over it. Uh, don't uh, take this wonderful opportunity, this wonderful blessing that he's given us now to have his word. Don't take it for granted because there may be a time when it is we do not have this easy access. Many of us who are listening now do have that. Some of us who are listening now may not. We have listeners um, on a regular basis from Russia and from Kosovo and Hungary and Turkey and Saudi Arabia and uh, places all over the world that are hostile to the gospel. And uh, first, may we pray for those fellow believers. And next, may we realize that it could be that way here anytime. And so uh, may we uh, just spend uh, that intentional time in uh, filling our hearts and minds with him in um, feasting on his word. Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Please um, continue to share this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone you think may receive a blessing from it and know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so led, send me a message sometime and let me know what the Lord's doing as you're spending more time in his word. Well, our verse for the day for October the 27th, 2024 comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 27, and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. So who was talking here? What was he talking about? What was going on? Well, we're going to answer those questions, I hope, here in the next few minutes. But you know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, this is the time of the podcast that I think it's wise for us to think about where we are in the scripture, what book or letter we're in, who may have written it, what was going on. And that helps us to get that appropriate context to be able to remember, to recall, to to share to live out the things that we're learning. And so we know that we're in the New Testament again. We are in the Gospels again. (laughs) And um, the New Testament begins with those four Gospels, and they tell us the good news of Jesus's earthly ministry. Uh, That's what gospel means. It means good news. There were four gospels written, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And God used four different men from four different backgrounds with four different writing styles to tell this most wonderful story of what Jesus has done for us in his time here on earth. Two of those men were in that original apostle group, those 12 that the Lord Jesus called to be his apostles. And those men were the ones who saw uh, these things in person. They were eyewitnesses, and then they went out and shared this good news, even and especially after Jesus was gone. He told them to go and make disciples and to teach what they'd heard, and um, 
that is exactly what they did. Two of the men were not in that original apostle group, but they received this good news and their message from those who were. Um, And so I love that God would use four different people from four different backgrounds to tell this wonderful story. Matthew's gospel is where we are today, and Matthew was in that original apostle group. He was a tax collector, and we read, I believe it's in Matthew chapter 9, and we read it in the other gospels as well that um, he was sitting at his tax booth when the Lord Jesus came by and said, follow me. And uh, Matthew did exactly that. He left that life of um, what seemed like good job security uh, working there for the Romans uh, for eternal security. And I love it. I love his detail. He so wanted his fellow Jews to know that Jesus was this long-awaited Messiah, this one they had looked for. And you can tell in his gospel that his audience, the the intended audience at the beginning, seemed to be his fellow Jews. He talked so much about the kingdom of heaven coming. He used over 60 Old Testament references to show people how Jesus was fulfilling and had fulfilled these prophecies. And um, his is the longest of the Gospels that we have. And I just love the detail that we see there. Um, as I mentioned, he was a tax collector. He was, His other name was Levi. And um, I just am so thankful for the way that he wrote and how he tried to um, get his fellow Jews to realize who had been in their midst. The kingdom of heaven had come near. Jesus, that Messiah, was there. And so uh, I just love his writing style. He goes, uh, at the beginning of his gospel, he begins with a genealogy because I think he knew that would have been important important to his fellow Jews uh, to be able to trace the lineage of Jesus. And that's what he begins with. And he shows how Jesus is in the lineage of Abraham and, and David. And it's just such a blessing. Um, and then he talks about uh, events surrounding Jesus's birth and then Jesus's baptism and then the beginning of Jesus's earthly ministry. And we see just all uh, just wonderful accounts of the teaching that Jesus did. And um, then as we get to this chapter 10, um, this is where we see that Jesus pulled out from uh, some of his closest disciples, those who were uh, walked very closely with him, 12 that he called apostles. And um, then he is is uh, telling them about what to expect and what they need to know in the days to come. And so I want to pick up here and read forward to our verse for the day so that we can get that context and maybe you'll be able to get a good picture of what was going on uh, as Jesus was teaching them. So if we pick up here in chapter uh, 10, verse 1, it says, And summoning in his twelve disciples, Jesus gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, saying, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or bag for your journey or even two tunics or sandals or a staff for the worker is worthy of his support. At whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it and stay there until you leave. Now as you enter the house, give it your greeting and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever does not receive you nor heed your words as you leave the house or that city, shake the dust off your feet. 
Truly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Do you see that? I just have to pause there. There's purpose in the persecution. It's so that his name can be further proclaimed. But when they deliver you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. And brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who is endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in this city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. And he's referring there to some of the Pharisees accused Jesus as being a, having a demon. And he's saying, you know, if they're going to do that to me, just expect that they're going to do it to you. It, 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 verse 26, it says, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. And here's our verse. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Oh, friends, I hope you can see how um, that fits into what Jesus was. He was giving his disciples these instructions as they were going went out to prepare them that it was not going to be easy but to continue to speak to continue to tell the truth and and be bold because it was going to be necessary and what he told them uh, to shout it out and I love that you know as I think about these things today I'm reminded that the Lord never asked his disciples, his apostles, his followers to do anything that he didn't give them um, all that they needed. Uh, He prepared them. He prepares us. Uh, even though uh, sometimes we look at a task before us and we think, how am I going to do this? I don't have what is necessary. And that's exactly right, because it comes from him. And we are not going to be able to do things the way that the world does things. When Jesus was telling them to go do all of these things, even all the way back in uh, verses 5 through 15, when he was saying, don't take uh, an extra tunic or don't take gold or silver or or put money in your bag. Um, I think that he was reminding them that he would, his father would provide. He would provide. He and his father were one. And so they would have what they needed. Um, When they went to, when he sent them to heal and to do all the things that they needed. It was not in their power. It was because of uh, God's power and his Holy Spirit working in them. It was uh, Jesus had given that authority. Um, He gave the things that they needed. He was giving them clear direction and saying, you know, I'm sending you out in this difficult situation. I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Um, And so be wise, um, but also uh, show this innocence. You know, be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Um, Watch out. They're going to come after you, uh, but don't worry uh, before because it will be given to you in that hour what you're to say. Not three days before, not, um, you know, 
you're not going to have the whole plan written out for you so you can practice the script but God will provide what you need in that hour. And he talks about the the spirit of your father who speaks in you. The Holy Spirit would do that. Do you see all the way along that Jesus is telling them what what is they're going to be doing, but they will be given just what they need at just the right time in just the right measure, but it won't be in their power. And that's how we know that it's of God when we're walking with him through difficult things and he asks us to do things and we look at it and say, there is no way that I can do that. And that's right. (laughs) We can't. It's his strength that we rely on. It's his Holy Spirit. It's him working through us. And why is that? It's because we are not the ones that are to get the glory. We don't deserve it. God is the one who gets the glory. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, they're the ones who are to be glorified in these things uh, that he calls us to do. And it's very much um, here what we see when he was talking about um, in this little section where we find our verse for the day that he was saying, you know, look at and and I think he was telling them, and they would be able to look back on this and see it as well, that uh, you followers, you learners, you disciples are not above your teacher. And look at how they're treating me. And look at how they would treat him. So don't think that you're going to get off any easier. Now, in our flesh, <clears throat> we may look at that and say, I don't, I don't know if I want to go through that. And that's being honest. However, he said that if we deny him before men, he'll deny us before his his father in heaven. And friends, he gives us what we need. He walks with us. He doesn't leave us alone out there floundering like a fish out of water. Um, He gives us exactly what we need. And that's why they could be bold. That's why we can be bold for him. If we walk according to how the Holy Spirit leads us, and then we use those gifts of the Spirit that are not of ourselves, that are all of him, we exhibit the fruit of that Spirit living within us, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And then if he tells us to be bold, uh, he will give us that spiritual gift to be able to share. He will give us exactly what we need in the moment. And so um, he told them in the verse right before the verse for the day, he says, do not fear them. So those ones that are going to come after you and to cause trouble and to want to harm you and want to cause you to be quiet. Do not fear them, for there's nothing concealed that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. In other words, uh, the truth is going to come out. Um, The truth of who Jesus is will be known to everyone at some point. I'm thinking of what we read in um, Philippians in chapter 2, where Uh, The Apostle Paul uh, just gives such a wonderful um, explanation and reminder of what Jesus did for us and reminds us that um, in chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Therefore God also highly exalted him, Jesus, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, people can deny who Jesus is. Um, the world can deny it. The devil can can, can continue to uh, push back against who we know that Jesus is, but the truth is going to come out. We see it. The truth is here. You know, the, God's word says the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies display his handiwork. The truth of him is here. We read in Romans that the things of him um, have been made clearly known so that no one is without excuse. I paraphrased that just a 
little bit, but it's in Romans chapter 1, somewhere in between verses 18 and 22, somewhere in there. Um, But God has made a way for everyone in the world to know about him and to know about his son. And so um, there's nothing that will not, that has not been shown and that will not be shown. And so Jesus was just encouraging them very much. And I think also encouraging us what we hear in the in the darkness and that could be you know in a in a small area but also what we hear from him in this dark world we need to speak we need to speak um both in the light in the daytime and speak as we are in him because he is the light of the world as are we he told us that in matthew chapter 5 verse 15 um i believe that's where it says it let me hop over there real fast no it's matthew five fourteen. he says you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven so uh, we are to speak out in the day we are to speak as we are in him now he told them that he would give them what to say and he will give us what to say um through his holy spirit um and i love this not only do they speak it in the light but down in that latter part of this verse proclaim upon the housetops and when you look up that word it is a almost like a shouting forth so we are to be bold with the truth and he will give us those words to say but you know there's part of it we need to know his word we need to be in his word and then out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks if we spend time in his word hiding his word in our heart Um, spending time with him drawing closer to him we will know that direction of the holy spirit and then when we have that um inclination that prodding of the spirit we won't quench it and he will give us the words to say um this world needs to hear the truth and uh it's just devoid it seems uh, at times of uh people who will stand for what is true and in what is right. But uh, as I mentioned before, God has made it such that no one is without excuse. Uh, But there are times that we will be called to be that witness, uh, that we will be called to speak truth into um, the this dark and dying world that uh, is just so overfilled with uh, lies and the deception of Satan. We are told to expose the darkness, and we do that with his light in us. Light scatters the darkness, and I love how the uh, gospel writer John described the Lord Jesus um, when at the very beginning of his uh, gospel And then this applies to us because that same light that he is, is within us if we are believers. But he says, very beginning of his gospel in John chapter 1, verse 4, he's talking about the Lord Jesus. And he says, in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overtake it. The darkness cannot overtake the light. It's trying. It's trying hard, but it cannot. Jesus has already won, and we need to share this good news. We don't need to keep it to ourselves. So may we be bold for him under the direction of his Holy Spirit. May we stand for him. Um, May we share this good news. Oh, friends, this world needs us to walk that out and show them uh, what we have in Christ. And, you know, in doing that, there will be some that will see it and realize that life and realize that light. And there'll be some who will continue to rebel and reject. But um, 
May we just be that light for him, for his glory. May we share this good news, what he has put in our heart, what his Holy Spirit has whispered to our heart, what we have read in his word. May we share it with others. That's why it is so important to read God's word, study God's word, live it out and share it for his glory. May we do that. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.